What's up everybody and welcome to the Military Simulator Tactical Shooter and Historic Gaming Channel, home of the weekly Steam Key Giveaway. We have given away five Postscriptum Steam Keys over the past month or so, and today I will be announcing the final winner for this batch of keys. So good luck to everybody that participated, and if you didn't win this time, stick around, stay tuned, we'll get more later. And of course we still have Easy Red 2, Mud and Blood, and Fire and Steel Steam Keys to give away. So we're going to keep on rolling with the weekly Steam Key Giveaway, in this video, if you enter you'll be entering for next week's giveaway but today gentlemen we are going to be looking at hell let loose a lot of cool new features coming to the game and one that i've been waiting for for a very long time probably one of the most ominous infamous and famous features of postscriptum the stuka dive bomb as the sound of this thing is all it takes to strike fear into the hearts of its would-be victims. For those of you that don't already know, the Stuka, or the Junkers Ju-87, was a German air-to-ground attack aircraft. And what really striked fear into its enemies' hearts was the screeching, nauseating sound that billowed from its Jericho trumpets, as they called them, like a giant whistle or horn mounted to the aircraft. This is an example of psychological warfare at its best. When you heard that sound coming, you sprinted to the closest cover or fallout bunker, and when it got really loud, I suppose you just tucked your head between your legs and kissed your ass goodbye. The infamous German Stuka dive bomb will be making its way into the game in update 12 as a precision strike. A commander call-in, of course, this new ability will prove as an effective solution to tightly knit infantry positions, stationary vehicles unaware of their senses, or exposed garrisons whose position can be pinpointed on a map. Now each faction has their own unique twist on this ability, sporting the very planes used historically to deliver such devastating blows on the battlefield. For example, the Americans will be sporting this US P-47 Thunderbolt to drop its bombs, and it'll be using a much more flatter trajectory on its approach. The Aleutian IL-2 is what the Soviets will be bringing the play with as their ground attack aircraft. With great power comes even greater responsibility, as a high cost and cooldown rate means that such a request must be radioed in with full confidence. As while the effective radius of the precision strike is small, its power is absolute. It's going to be very interesting to see the different strategies used for each of these precision strikes. Now in update 12, not only is every team getting a unique bomb drop, but every faction will have a new and improved strafing run. As you can see in this clip, the animation looks much more smooth and elegant as the plane swoops through the air. The second commander ability included in update 12 is the ammo drop. Similar to the existing supply drop, the ammo drop parachutes in an emergency stock of assorted medical, firearms, and explosive ammunition for soldiers on the ground. The ammo crate from this ability is unique in the sense that rearming from one will restock all types of ammo carried by a soldier and will initially allow soldiers to rearm a total of 12 times, or 12 soldiers rearming each one time. The ammo drop will be a especially handy if you run out of rifle ammunition and grenades or even bandages as they'll all be replaced during the one rearming cycle. The rearming of a soldier can only be done once per life until the 12 rearm slots in the crate have been exhausted or the crate itself is destroyed. Commanders that like to plan ahead should find this new ability particularly useful when preparing for an upcoming firefight as any advantage can turn the tide of battle. And let's be serious, now we'll have even more incentive to do stupid stuff like this. Look at me, wasting rockets on infantry. <laughs> so 
So along with new commander abilities, comes a new addition to the vehicle lineup for the US forces. The Sherman M4A3 75W. This new addition will replace the existing Sherman M4A1, as the M4A1 was one of the first tanks implemented into the game and it's beginning to show its age. The new Sherman comes from the British tradition of naming its American produced tanks after American Civil War generals, named after General William Sherman. The name quickly caught on and led to the adopted practice of the US Army naming all of its tanks after generals. Some of the first M4A3s were shipped to Europe in the weeks and months following the Normandy invasion on June 6, 1944. It was the goal of the US Army to place the Ford-engined Shermans with their updated second generation features into the hands of combat troops as quickly as possible. The M4 Sherman was uncomplicated, reliable, and mechanically well constructed. Working in tandem with well-coordinated allied infantry, artillery, and air forces, the plentiful and trusted Shermans were able to vanquish most German armored formations simply by ganging up on them in overwhelming numbers when all else failed. Often considered one of the great additions to Allied forces during the entirety of World War II, the trusty Sherman holds a place in any World War II gamer or history buff's heart. In addition to the new US Sherman M4A3, players will have the pleasure of seeing the reintroduction of the German Panther tank in its upclassed heavy configuration and showcase its fresh coat of smart materials alongside the Tiger One. For anyone that really wants to know what the smart material is, I highly recommend going back to Black Matter's past briefs, Developer Briefing 130, where they explain the smart materials benefits in detail. Basically, in a nutshell, it provides a higher texture fidelity with a lower cost on performance and a versatile workflow, allowing for new features unachievable using previous methods. As the dev team move forward with a wider implementation of smart materials and later updates, they intend to also apply them to other items, allowing them the ability to do new things such as adding variety to models, giving a more realistic and authentic feel to the game. In fact, all new content moving forward will be using smart materials as a new baseline standard in model texturing. Now, last but not least, we are getting some new layers and modes to the Omaha Beach map. Players who are seasoned to the brutality of storming the famous Omaha Beach landings will be pleased to see that amongst the additional maps of Update 12, two new modes have been added, now rounding out the map to include all available game modes. The landing craft pictured will allow players to spawn and mount up from within, providing additional cover over the existing boats used in the offensive US game mode. I am super excited to see what players think of the new beachfront and how it plays during the new warfare and German offensive game modes. Now we're gonna get machine guns on half tracks, Damn. flare guns for the recon roll, new camo on the German Tiger tank, night maps for Foy, Purple Heart Lane, Hurtgen Forest, and Kursk, including improvements to existing maps like Kursk and Omaha Beach. Also particle effects and new effects for blood hits, artillery explosion, and more. Additional improvements will include reload interrupts, fortification snapping, smoother vaulting, smoother MG deployment, and more. Also, the public testing environment went live on June 9th, so if you're interested in testing these new features out, possibly giving the devs some feedback, and help update 12 along quicker with your help. Alright guys, we're going to wrap this up, as that about covers it for the incoming update 12 for Hell Let Loose. I want to thank everybody for watching, I want to especially thank all of my subscribers. We just recently hit 2,500 subs, and we're barreling towards 5,000. Wouldn't it be something to get there before year's end? I suppose one can dream. Now we've given away five postscriptum keys this go around. We're now giving away the last one. Congratulations, Mr. Scissors. Come on down, collect your prize, DM me on Discord, and pick what game you want. And good luck to everybody in the next week's giveaway. Now real quick, I want to thank all of my channel members, the Millsimp Minions. Scissors here just came on on the Millsimp tier for 99 cents a month. He and every other member gets double the entry in every week's Steam Key giveaway, which may or may not made him the win. I don't know, as I run a random program to select winners. Again, congratulations to him, and a special thank you to my channel members. Consider supporting the channel by clicking the blue join button below. Also, don't forget, come through to the Discord. If you record your gameplay, post your interesting, funny, kill streak, whatever cool clips you have, post them in submit your clip section, because I will soon be making episode 4 of the top 10 Milsim mode. Moments. And if your clip gets first place, you win a Steam key. Alright, again, I want to thank everybody for watching. Good luck to all of you in the giveaway.
I'll see you boys in the next one. Y'all be good to each other.